I've been using one of these, uh, but I needed to expand the capabilities, so I did this build. Uh, but it's more than just a bunch of discs, so let's talk about this one. Welcome to Two Machines and More. So for quite a few years, I've been using a four bay NAS. A lot of that is dedicated to archiving and storing video files for running this channel. There is uh, still plenty of space, but I was encountering some limitations. Uh, first off was the connection speed. So this one uh, was a little bit of an older one. It had two gig ports, uh, which I had been running in link aggregation mode. Then I even updated to a USB 2.5G adapter, but I still wanted faster transfers. And the other thing that it has uh, is uh, M.2 slots that are intended as a cache device. And then I had two drives installed, but transfer speeds were are still more or less limited by that link speed, right? So I think uh, there were some unofficial ways to sh use those as sh you know share drives. But again, it's still running at most 2.5 GE transfer speed, so there's not really a point unless I needed the extra expansion. So at which point it just makes more sense to get bigger HDDs, right? Uh, three, the Synology NAS that I had can do a lot, but I just wanted the flexibility and control over maintaining everything. Uh, I could have potentially upgraded to a newer NAS with a 10 GE port, but they're not cheap. Uh, so building up a file server out of parts that I already had, uh, you know, mostly had, made a lot of sense. So that I just dug out some parts and then put it together. So uh, for the case, I wanted something small so that I can still fit it in uh, on my rack. So all my networking stuff is in the corner of a closet. So I can't go too big. Uh, I don't think you can get this uh, case anymore, but it is the Anides Atomic ITX, a fairly compact SFF case. Uh, but there is enough space for me to mock up a whole stack of drives. Also has front fan capability, which will be nice for bringing air directly through those discs to keep them cool. These are Scythe Grand Tornadoes. They can run up to 3000 RPM, but they generally will never have to for what the system is used for. Uh, they're just good, affordable LCB fans. Boris an Azurox Z490M ITX, and I've paired it with an i5-10400. It's still a six core chip, but fairly efficient. 30 to 40, 38 watts when it's idle and when it's serving files and such, maybe low 40. So with a build like this, uh, a big priority is the idle or low intensity power draw. And this does pretty well for the whole system. Now, usually for a home server, you'll see folks go with, uh, you know, what, what might be considered fairly low RAM. But I actually went with 32 gigs of DDR4 here. Of course, I had the 32 gig kit already, and I probably would have gone with 64 though. Um, if I had that and I'll talk about this shortly, but these drives are running as a ZFS pool RAM is very important for this setup since it serves as the first level cache. So definitely more is better with uh, this intended purpose. This cooler is the ID cooling SC 904 XT. It's nothing fancy, but it's also really not a big deal to cool the 10400. I have, you know, still some high clearance left, but uh, just something that was here. 92 millimeter fan in between those two towers. It'll do perfectly well uh, cooling this CPU. You probably will never see the fan ramp up. The power supply is a Cooler Master 550 watt SFX unit, which I did have to rig to set up a little bit higher since my case actually doesn't have additional cutouts to raise it. It's actually attached to the case with the cage fan screws right now, which is okay, but not typical. These are just the hard drives that I took out from the NAS. Uh, they're still in very good shape. I did have to repurpose some drive mounts that I had lying around. I think these are from the NKSM1 EVO. Uh, so I have a stack of three here, and then I put another one on the cage, and I, this is the kind of official mounting spot for the case. These are four terabyte Western Digital Reds. These are really good drives for a 24 seven file server. The oh, M.2 drives, the board has two slots. I've got two installed. One is the system drive, which will also have a big portion dedicated to a faster network share. And the other one is a cache drive, um, and I'll explain that shortly. And yes, I did go out and get one very important component, which is pretty key. This is the ASUS 10GE NIC, which will slot into the expansion slot. And without this, I can only get 2.5G out of this board, which in hindsight is still pretty incredible for its time since this board had both a 2.5G and a gig speed port. But uh, yeah, this build wouldn't let me achieve what I need uh, if not for this guy here. So if you're curious about the setup, I mentioned ZFS, so you may 
No, this is a Linux build. The drives are set up as RAID Z2, which is similar in structure to RAID 6, uh, which would provide for two disk redundancy. It may seem a little bit overkill because I only have four drives and two of those are going to be dedicated to that redundancy, but a little bit more uptime stability and flexibility here. And uh, my effective capacity is two of these uh, four terabyte drives, which I may upgrade capacity for these drives down the road as they start to wear down. A ZFS is really good though. You got auto snapshots, very efficient compression, and by default, it will cache to RAM, and that's called the ARC. And since I've got an M.2 drive that I added to the drive pool, that's gonna be a secondary, what's called the L2 ARC. So as the RAM or the ARC fills up, it'll start offloading to the L2 ARC and then slowly empty that out to the, the hard disk pool at that slower transfer speed. Now, the good news is that writing to the HDD pool over my network for a few gigs worth of files, I am basically saturating the 10G link speed. So as the cache fills up, it will start to slow down a little bit, but it's still very, very fast. And then I still have the faster M.2 based network share that I can utilize for you know high speed transfers for things that I use more often. So for most of my usage, I won't need to read off the hard drives right away anyway. So I, I do have a large scratch drive on my production system. So that's you know for that purpose as this is more gonna be for longer term storage and then backing up systems. You know, that this type of cache setup does work very well. Also, it's just very easy to set up the ZFS pool, just a few uh, command lines and it's very simple. So for the Linux distro, if you're curious, I was deliberating between Debian and Ubuntu. So ultimately settled on Ubuntu 25. So this is a plucky puffin build. Uh, it's working well so far. I'm also running my unified network uh, controller on here and it's gonna do a few other things in addition to mainly being uh, an SMB server. But the good thing is if I do end up switching to Debian in the future, I can just re-import the ZFS pool very easily. Uh, this system will also do regular ZFS snapshotting to an external hard drive just to cover all my bases. So yeah, you know, different type of build here. I don't plan on uh, doing these often. I don't have a need for you know, too many of these systems, but as I update it, I will share the goodies with you. And if you're curious about anything or have questions about this type of system, feel free to comment down below. Uh, make sure you give a like and uh, that you're subscribed. Big thanks for watching today. Thank you.